Hello everyone and welcome to our first Atomic Mass live home stream. Hello so, oh no, that's just a mistake. There we go. All right, so don't have the computer sound on when you click live. That's the one thing I forgot today. So I hope you guys are all doing super well out there, enjoying stuff. Uh, we're gonna give this a shot. I spent the weekend with Josh kind of figuring everything out. Um, so that we can start bringing you guys some more home streams. Dallas is going to get a setup similar to this one as well. Um, so not a lot of fancy camera tricks. You've got me on my uh, MacBook camera, which is really gorgeous right now after several weeks in isolation. Um, just looking like I came right out of that cave. Uh, but I'm going to finish up my Red Skull today that I started last Thursday. Then I'm going to move on and uh, we might do some assembly on Dr. Octopus. Uh, very glad you guys could join us today for this Atomic Mass live stream. Um, hope you guys are all doing super well, so let's just dive right into it and get this, uh, this project underway. So here we go. Alright, so... <laughs> Uh, last week I did a lot of really good work on my Red Skull. I got all of the coat done, um, worked on his face as well, so we have the iconic Red Skull going on. His hands are done, so the skin is done. The big things I want to go back through today are uh, I want to work on um, my straps, which I decided I was going to make a different color. Um, I think I've picked out a color that I like for that. And then maybe we'll do a little bit on the cube, try to finish this guy off for once and uh, we'll go from there. So I hope everyone out there has been having, had a great weekend. We had some beautiful weather here in Seattle. So that was really nice and helpful. Um, especially because it allowed the kids to get outside. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna use uh, Scale 75 Fantasy Gray. Uh, gray. Uh, so this is SFG42. Um, this one I kind of liked. I was looking through a bunch of the different colors. Um, it has a very kind of like, it's got a little greenish tinge to it, uh, which will tie really nicely in with the military olive drab that I did for the coat using, uh, what did I use last? Riva Gray, I believe it was, um, last week. So we're just going to go in here. We're just going to start laying out a base coat on these straps. I'm just going to be kind of careful to make sure that I block it in and when I make a mistake like that because this is a little bit of a different way to, to paint for me I come back in and I just erase it with a little bit of a wet brush so but again we're just going to continue to to do what we did last week which was our base coat wash and highlight a really common and great technique for folks to use especially people we're kind of looking for that next step beyond like layering or just simple base coats. Quick three step process. Makes it really quick and simple. So I'm just looking to get a nice even base coat going on here um, with my stuff. And we're just gonna block this out really quick and then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do a quick, I might not even wash this honestly because it's so dark. I might just do a quick highlight and call it good because the straps are not really anything that I'm super concerned about. Um, getting a lot of detail on and volume on, but we'll see. So, plus I want to get on to that, that Dr. Octopus, so I have something to paint for the next stream. <clears throat> and i got to figure out how I'm going to paint him because i got to be honest with you, I painted my I painted my first Doc Ock. Oh gosh. Where is he? Uh, I painted my first Doc Ock uh, according to the normal color scheme. So this was my first Doc Ock. And uh, we did the classic yellow and green. And man, do I not like painting yellow that much. Um, so I think this time for this new Doc Ock that I'm going to paint, I'm going to try something different. I've seen a couple of, uh, a couple of video game inspired Dr. Octopuses where his colors have been more like a, a really dark kind of green and then a, uh, a blue, like a really navy blue. I thought that looked really cool. Um, <clears throat> we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll just go crazy and paint them in wild colors. Maybe we'll just do all green, minimize the yellow. I don't know yet. We gotta get this red skull done first though. So I'm gonna come back in. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna come around here. Just gonna hit his belt. I'm trying to be fairly careful as I go around and 
make sure that I don't get paint on the stuff that I already finished. I don't want to do that. But if I do, I can always use my eraser method. Let's clean the brush off really quick, go back in, and kind of blend it out. We're just going to nail this in. Uh, CP10, I see a lot of people talking about CP10. So, Josh isn't here to stop me. So I guess, you know, I can... <laughs> I can say that uh, I just reviewed and submitted the updated assembly instructions for CP10, so we're getting we're getting a lot closer. Um, looks really good. Very happy with it now. So hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. We'll see. A few more steps to go. And obviously we got we got a few things that still need to come out. We need our Gamora and Nebula to come out. I've got my nebula sitting downstairs. I haven't been able to paint her yet. Because <clears throat> I was supposed to get a painter in the... What was it? The live stream after Dallas did Gamora. And then, uh, unfortunately, you know, the pandemic went into full swing. And we decided, along with our partners at Asmodee, our publishers at Asmodee, that we were going to delay new releases for April. And so now my Gamora is on hold. She's just looking all badass down there. Ready to go, but no paint on her yet. All right, so I think we got those straps pretty well knocked in. So I'm gonna switch out. I'm going to grab quick. Uh, so I'm gonna use this uh, Miskatonic Gray just to add into that um, Negro Gray. And I just want to bring up a quick highlight. And like I said, I don't think I'm going to wash this this time. I'm just going to go straight to a little edge highlight. So I'm looking for something that's a little, <clears throat> a little lighter. And I just want to come in and I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to hit these edges a little bit and just give it a little bit of color, a little bit of pop. So almost like a dry brush here, just focusing on. Focus on a bit of the lower ends. Making sure that I don't overdo it too much. I want this to be fairly subtle. Just because those tops a little bit of a pop. There we go. we go. So I'm just going to bring this out just a little bit more, get a little brighter. Hit it right there, a little bit right there. That's pretty good. All right, so how have people been, uh, how have people been surviving the quarantine so far? Hopefully you guys are all staying safe and, um, you know, not not going crazy. Got a lot of hobby projects. I know I've seen a lot of really great hobby process on uh, on the Facebook group and stuff. People like really cranking away on their characters, building through. We've seen a lot of really great Hulk games coming up. That's been really awesome to see. Um, been working on something else for you guys to keep yourselves entertained at home. Pagani's been hard at working and laid out with our graphic designer Jesse. So I'm hoping that we'll have that. Um, for you guys in the next couple of weeks or so, but um, we're very we're very entrenched and like super interested in making sure you guys are safe and entertained and happy and it's part of the reason why we wanted to bring these streams home so we can do them a little more frequently, have a little bit more flexibility with them, um, and really just you know hang out with you guys because we certainly miss playing games with our friends from the LGS's and another for game nights and movie nights and all that stuff and so but this is a great way for us overall to come together and just kind of hang out and so for those who are wondering I'm just doing I mean I'm just doing a, a layer line highlight I'm not doing anything special I've just mixed that brighter color <clears throat> and my only goal here is to just come in and kind of like hit the highlights, give my, give those layers or those leather straps just a little bit of pop. 
Um, so I'm mostly aiming for like kind of on the edges. Um, so I get a little bit of volume to them. <laughs> Avoiding kind of the, I want to keep these dark recesses. Whoop. I want to keep these dark, these dark line recesses between the straps to make sure that they really pop off. Because again, remember from last week, uh, the eye is going to see things that are darker as pushed further away. And the things that are brighter are going to be closer to them. Um, so in order to make these straps seem closer, I'm going to make them just a bit brighter. So I, of course, used a lighter gray here um, compared to the black, the really dark Riva gray that's kind of outlining these in the back. And if I wanted to accentuate that further, which maybe I do, um, I can go in and I can grab some just straight black uh, or another really dark color. And I can... Let me find my black. Where'd my black go? Oh, it's missing. Of course this happens. Um, I can go in there and I can just kind of like push those, those shadows and the highlights even further with everything. Oh, there it is. Here's my black. Fantastic. All right, so... Yeah, and for all of those guys out there saying that, you know, you're still, you're still out there working because you're essential, man, I, I gotta say, I appreciate, I appreciate each and every one of you guys just going to work and making life a little easier for everyone else. Like, that's really awesome. So you can see I've just taken my black and I'm just very carefully drawing in some nice lines right next to the strap. And that's helping to even push that strap further out because that dark line, hopefully you guys can see, um, is helping just, just add that visual cue that the strap is on top of um, the, the cloak that's underneath. It's also adding some separation, so you're getting those really defined shapes and forms, um, making sure that everything is really easy for the eye to read, even at that 40 mil scale. So again, like we talked about last time, we're really just playing magic tricks with the eyes. We're creating, we're helping along the fact that yes, these miniatures are three dimensional, but your eye isn't particularly great at seeing something that's only 40 millimeters big from, you know, arm's length away, from a table distance away. So what we're going about and doing is we are simply um, using these techniques to make sure that the eye has a lot easier time parsing the information that it can see. And so it's just a lot of like really cool kind of magic tricks. Um, and that's all art really is. I mean, you look at some of those optical illusions that people can do and it's all about tricking the eye. And the way that you trick the eye is a bit by learning obviously how the eye sees things. So, all right, so I'm pretty happy with that for the dark lining. I'm going to play a little bit um, now. So I'm pretty happy with those straps. I call that good. We got some nice separation. They look really good. Adding some contrast there. Um, hopefully you guys can all see that. But now I'm going to do, so I have to do these Hydra logos on the side. And I still need to do the belt buckles. Um, now normally in the past I've done just mirrored my red for the red skull. I'm going to try something a little different though. Uh, Scale 75 has these super cool metallics, these alchemy colors. So we're going to use some garnet alchemy, which is this really nice red um, metallic. And we're going to we're going to make the belt buckles and we're going to do those um, hydra icons in this red, in this in this alchemy garnet red. And so let's see if we can do this here. You can see like right there, you can see how cool this color is. It's like this nice, really poppy red metallic. Um, so it just, it just looks, it looks really cool. So we're gonna use that and we're going to um, just block in some, some poppy metals and have some fun with that. I'm not gonna be too careful worrying about the little gaps. So I'm just gonna try to keep my layers a bit thin because I want to make sure that I can wash this later because we're going to make it pop even more with a red. We're going to use a little bit of red ink to make it wash. But look how nice that 
pops right off of our dark, dark um, clothing going on here. So it gives us a little bit of visual hotness. Little little poppy interest that'll match well with that um, with the cube when we do the cube. I think one of the things that we have to figure out. Uh, so I haven't said what brush I'm using, but if you're wondering, I'm using uh, Winsor Newton Series Seven. Very very classic uh, miniature brush for a lot of people to use. It's a fantastic fantastic brushes, um, but they have they have a really nice point. Uh, they have really nice barrels so that they work well that way. Like it's really good. Uh, you know what? Let's. I wasn't going to, but now I'm going to. I'm liking this color so much. I'm just gonna. I don't know why he's got a little bit of red metallic like striping going on, but I feel like it. It just feels right. And if it feels right, you should just do it. Plus, I'm really liking how this color is turning out. So. So we're just gonna play with it. We're just gonna roll with it. There are no rules right now. Just come in and hit that. We'll hit this other one over here. And now I can see that I missed a huge part of his shoulder, but I can fix that really easily. Let's get that hit. Sweet. Okay, so we've got our red metallic popped in there. Pretty happy with that. I think it looks really awesome. It's got some nice pop. I'm going to grab my rivet gray. And I'm going to fix that missed shoulder. Sometimes, you know, you get going and you're not paying attention. And uh, there we go. Rivet gray. So again, this was the color that we used uh, for the base coat last week on Thursday. So if you want to see how we kind of use this color to build up our our coat and how we washed it and everything we got to this point, you can check it out on YouTube or Twitch. Um, but it's all right there and we kind of go through the process of what we did. So I'm just going to come back in here and where I see that I'm missing this area. Come in, I'm just going to block it out really quick. And it looks like that's the only spot that I really need to clean up. Cool, that's what we want. Oh, I see my red spilled a little bit right here, so I'll just come back in and cover that up too. All right, groovy, 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 groovy. I'm going to grab some of this Miskatonic gray again which I just used to highlight my straps. And I'm gonna go ahead and give his undershirt a lighter gray coat. So we're just gonna come in, kind of careful about this. Hit that, come around over here. Hit that. back through like that. Spread it in. And that gives us a little bit more visual interest as well. There. Perfect. And you know what? I'm just going to leave that as is. So I'm not even going to go through. You can see that because of the way the paint uh, has a bit of translucency to it. I've already got some darkness right here because I had the Riva gray underneath it. So this almost worked kind of like a wash. Um, so I'm just going to leave this because I think it's dark enough and I've got these nice highlights and that's a small area and I don't really want to mess too much with it. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. It gave me a little pop and gave me a little separation around the neck and the head. So I think we're doing really great. Um, ooh, I want to go back with my red that I'm having so much fun with. I'm going to hit these buttons really quick. jamming out some fun stuff. I didn't realize that we were going to use so much red metallic, but you know what? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it right now. 
like all in on this. You got to have your flair, you know. Sweet. All right. And we'll do our bravery test. We'll come in and we'll hit this little guy right here. There we go. Get my finger and wipe off a little bit of that. Boom! We got all the metals everywhere. Great. All right. So now I want to give a little bit of a little bit of definition to that stuff. So I'm going to uh, mix a little bit of. We're gonna go with this um, ink tense crimson, which again is an ink, so it's a highly um, <clears throat> it's highly concentrated pigment. Uh, it's super thin, so it makes a great wash. You can add it to your paints to get them even brighter and stuff. And I'm going to use uh, a little bit of this chestnut. Whoop, come in there. So Inktense Chestnut. I'm gonna mix these two together to make a shade wash. Um, and I'm gonna wash those metal areas really lightly. I'm more of a glaze, honestly. So a super thin, super thin coat. I kind of want it to pool in the recesses so that I can get some some shadows in there. Um, but I don't want to lose that super awesome red metallic and I'd prefer honestly at this point not to have to go back and do it again. And so I'm just going to show you. So here, here's my color. So you can see it's kind of like a very muddy red brick brown kind of going on. So let's use a little bit of water. Um, I'm not going to use any medium for this because I'm going to use so little of it that I don't think it's going to matter. But if I was going to wash this over a larger surface, I would definitely want to add some mixing medium of some type. Um, Vallejo mixing medium works great. And the real reason you want to do that is because the more water you add, the less adhesive the paint really becomes. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, it's not going to run everywhere and not stick where I want it to go. However, because I'm doing such small areas, I'm not particularly concerned um, with adhesion right now. So I think I can get away with just a little bit of water to thin it out. You can already see how I'm getting that nice shading going on there. Go over to this. Just hit it in there. So it's making those little tentacles pop a little bit better. It's pulling that red a little bit more to the red side because it's giving it a little bit of a translucent layer of red. So just making the color richer. If we really wanted to make it super red, uh, like if you wanted to use this um, <clears throat> Garnet Alchemy for Iron Man, which I think it would work fantastic for, um, you could use that as a base coat and then just take some of that Inktense Crimson or even Inktense Red, um, turn it into a glaze, and then just simply hit it once, twice, maybe three times with that glaze and it would really make that red pop like a super candy kind of red. And yeah, I think I haven't I haven't done that yet because um, I've just started playing with some of these scale 75 metallics, but I think it could be uh, pretty fantastic. All right, cool. So there we go. So my red metallics, I'm happy with those. I think they're great. Uh, we've got a little bit of definition, some shading going on there. Uh, yeah, like just to show you an example of like some of the things you can do. So this is another one of the um, alchemy colors. So this is their blue, which is called, what is that one called? Yeah, so it's uh, cobalt al alchemy. So a super awesome color for like cosmic armor and stuff. You just use a base of that, and then I use a little bit of like cyan ink wash, and um, you can just get this awesome like blue metallic going on. It's it's phenomenal. It's really fun. So um, 
really big fan so far of like playing with those metallics and just seeing what you can do. All right, we got to do the cube. So, um, you know, what color should we make this cube? Blue's the safe bet. Uh, but you know, we've, we've done some pretty crazy stuff so far. So I feel like, I feel like we could go a little off book. Um, anyone, anyone got an idea in the chat that they want to see a cube color for? before we wrap this guy up, because he's real close. Um, and if not, I'll just pick something. So, pearlescence, there, eh, there really aren't any pearlescence that I would say they, at least not that I'm aware of, or at least that I have in front of me. Um, they have some fluorescence, which are pretty wild. I just wanted to come in and do this dark line while I wait for my destiny to be chosen. Bright effing yellow. Woo! I'm definitely not doing the Rubik's Cube. I don't have time for that. Purple. Purple would be pretty cool. Let's go with purple. Alright, so I'm going to do purple. And I assume we want like a real purple, not like a magenta purple. Um, so let's play. Let's let's play a little bit. Alright. Uh, da, 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 da. So I think my gray is still pretty much intact. So we'll just we'll just mess around here. Let's just see what happens. Um, and speaking of fluorescence, let's try this. So psychedelic purple. Whoop! Get it in frame, Will. So psychedelic purple FX floor fluorescent color from scale seventy five have not had a chance to use any of these yet so let's experiment together and see what happens <laughs> okay so I think what I'm gonna do my plan is to approach this is I'm gonna use this purple I'm gonna thin it down just a little bit okay and we're just gonna see what happens so Alright, so I'm liking this so far. It's a little splotchy, but I think that's alright. Because we thinned it down and we're getting that nice like white undertone showing through. And the fluorescence is kind of doing its trick. <clears throat> so we're just gonna keep hitting this thing. Like that. Come back to this side over here. Playing in. So I'm just kind of playing with this fluorescent, like thin down to halfway between a wash and a paint. And I'm trying to just let the, the white underneath like really play as I pull the paint around and mess around with it. And then we'll go back through and probably use a wash to glaze it up and make it look a little brighter. So far, I'm pretty happy with how it's working for this cube here. Let me get down here. All right, so that's our start. We'll let that dry really quick. And then I think we'll come back through with a different color. And what do we want here? We'll use a little bit of this, maybe? Maybe? see what comes see what comes out of this all right so I just took the same same purple and I'm mixing in this uh, brilly white which is another one of the fluorescent colors and we're just gonna play and see what happens so, I'm 
This is a little bit of a wet blend right now because my my fluorescent purple wasn't quite dry. But that's okay. All right, so. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that dry really nice and well, um, but I'm pretty happy with it. And then I'm gonna just gonna glaze it with some purple, <clears throat> probably some purple ink, um, to really get that richness, richness in there. And then I'll just go back in and I'll probably do a little bit of spot white highlighting um, to really make that cube like glow, but it's not too bad for experimenting with these fluorescents and just seeing what's going on, so. All right. <clears throat> And I think with that, outside of the base, which I won't bore you with, uh, I'm pretty darn satisfied with this red skull. I think we got a pretty good red skull. So we'll come back, finish the cube here in a minute, and we will uh, call him good. But otherwise, fantastic. Really like how that red turned out. You can see how the glaze is drying on it to make it nice and <clears throat> nice and dark. We got that cube going on there. It's nice. So, next, Africa Dallas is we're gonna we're gonna assemble ourselves a Doc Ock. While we wait for that to dry. Very exciting. This was a Josh thing. All right, here we go. I might have to pull out just a little bit. Boop. A little more. Boop. Too far. Yep. All right. There we go. There's our Doc Ock frame. <clears throat> Let's build us a Doc Ock. So, all right, so we're just going to start, obviously, we've talked about this before, clippers are super important, so um, we're going to use those, and we're going to just cl clip in, uh, see you, where do I want to go with this, um, so the big thing is to make sure that you have uh, the instruction pulled up, which I'm doing right now. And then, um, you're gonna wanna come in and I'm just gonna start with the torso. So we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna put the clippers to the side like that. And we're just gonna start clipping our pieces off. So we have one piece. Let's see. Two piece. All right. And so before I go any further on the frame, I'm just going to take care of these parts because I want to go. Um, I want to go step by step here. So we're just going to start with the torso. So after you've clipped, making sure that the the flat end of the clippers you want flush to that part, because that's gonna give you the cleanest clip. So once you've done that, you're then just gonna go in, and we're just gonna start cleaning everything off. And this part's pretty good. We're just looking for any of that extra flash that might be left over, um, or parts that didn't get clipped. We'll clean that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to use plastic glue. Um, you can use plastic glue, you can use super glue. The options are all there for you. But I prefer plastic glue on these <clears throat> miniatures because it actually chemically fuses the parts together by effectively melting the plastic and then resetting it. So it creates a lot stronger of a bond. Now, of course, the downside is that once you make that bond, it's really hard to break. So you definitely want to make sure you know what you're doing. 
and that your parts are going to fit together the way you want them to. So dry fitting is best. Um, because I only have the two torso pieces here and it's pretty clear how they go. I'm not going to worry too much about that. <coughs> okay, so I've got my torso. It's pretty good. You'll notice that this part right here wants to pull away. So there's a couple ways to approach that. I can simply just hold it to see if the glue will set it longer if I keep it together. Um, alternatively, I can, if I'm using plastic glue or super glue, come in especially with this thin stuff, I can run a bit over where the gap is. And I can just push it together a little bit to see if it'll seal. And if I notice that it's still a little, little pulling away, um, what I can do is I can take either uh, super glue or plastic glue and I can run it over the crack and fill, basically gap fill it and then sand it down with either my knife or um, a hobby file like this. Let's make it nice and s smooth. Shuri, I have a Shuri. I'll, I'll assemble a Shuri. I got no problem assembling Shuri. I've assembled like six of them so far, so. Okay, we're gonna let the torso dry. Um, I'm gonna move on to the boots next. So, here's our boots. We're just gonna come in, clip, clip. I'm going to spin this around. All right. So there we go. Boots clipped out. Check these parts really quick. I'm just going to clean that off really fast. So sometimes you'll get these mold lines. For those who are new to the hobby, um, and these are just basically when a mold is shot, it's a two halves of a block. So it comes together and it presses like that and then it comes off. So what'll happen is, is that you'll get these really fine like mold lines on certain parts. And that's where the, the natural gapping between those two blocks comes through. So, so I'm just going to do a really quick scrape here. Clean this stuff off. And the way, the best way to get those mold lines off is to just do a really light scrape with your knife. Um, right over where they are. And if you want to put a bit more force to it, you can turn it around and you can actually use the flat of the blade, um, which will have more than enough. As you can see, it's going to flake right off there more than enough strength and sharpness to scrape that mold line off. And the benefit to that way is that you don't have the sharpness of the blade. So if you make a mistake or push too hard, you won't cut in to the part. Um, so the flat of the blade can often be pretty good. How often do I change my blades? Really, it's like whenever I feel like the blade needs to change. Um, probably I don't change them often enough, to be fair. Uh, it's not something that I think about very often. And then when I do, I'm like, man, that blade was uh, that blade was really dull. Um, it depends on how frequently you're using it and stuff. Um, my test mostly is if I notice that I'm that I'm really working at scraping a part, um, and I don't seem to be getting results from it, or if I'm having to push really hard when I'm trying to like cut off. Um, for example, you know, if I want to, I can come in, and I can instead of using the clippers, this isn't the best, but sometimes you want to do it. Um, you can cut with the knife by pushing down to get rid of that, that bond. So if I noticed, for example, that I'm like, well, um, I'm really having to push pretty hard to get through that. I know my blade is dull. Um, I'm not having that problem right now. I just switched out that blade a couple weeks ago and I haven't really been assembling a ton of stuff. I have a backlog of assembled stuff. Um, but it's just, it's go, go by feel, you know, I don't think like outside of, you know, running through hobby blades really fast. Um, it's not like changing your blade out too frequently is going to hurt you. Um, but also I think, you know, unless you're cutting foam, like high density foam or things like that, you have to change your blade like every sheet when you're cutting high density foam. But the plastics, they don't, they don't run the, they don't run the blade out very quickly. So you should be able to get a good month out of your, your hobby blade unless you're doing something crazy with it. Um, Okay, so I'm going to assemble the feet. 
I put glue on the edges. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to give it a firm push to make sure that it sets. Come to the other one and you'll notice that these are keyed specifically so you can dry fit them to make sure they fit. But you have very specific polygonal shapes so you can't really mess up by putting the feet in the wrong way. Um, if you're still worried about it, just make sure the, um, you know, that, that arch of the foot is on the inside. So you have that natural whoop right there. We got that. So our dock ock is coming right along. It's looking pretty good. I, cut, I clipped off the head. I don't know if that was next on my instructions. I'm now free forming it, which is what you should never do. But I've assembled a lot of dock ock, so I feel okay about it when I make a mistake. That statement can come back and bite me and you can all laugh. Laugh super hard. Um, I do see a little bit of mold line across Doc Ock and the side of his head, so I'm just going to do a quick little scrape. Try to get rid of that really quick. Turn that around because I can lose the blade. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect. So head, head. We know that's going to go. Boop. Just like that. There's our dry fit, which I haven't done yet. And I'm just going to come in. So one of the things you want to be careful about when applying glue, especially to like keys like this, is that um, you have to be careful about how much glue you apply, not because it'll take longer for it to dry, but because you don't want to become a victim um, of hydraulics and pressure, right? So if you put if you put too much liquid or any kind of material glue into a plug and then you try to push the plug in, um, that liquid still has to have somewhere to go, right? So it's the exact same way a hydraulic press works. As you push in, the pressure is going to push it back out. So if you notice that your parts won't set properly, it's possible that you've just applied too much glue inside the plug. So it's best overall to try to avoid not like to avoid putting too much or any glue inside of the key plug itself and instead like on the feet here I'm gonna break this apart really quick so I can demonstrate this so instead of putting a ton of glue inside the plug what I want to do instead because this has a nice um, flush surface is I want the glue to go over where the flat will meet and maybe I'll get a little bit of glue into the plug but I don't want a lot um, because again, that hydraulic pressure is going to push that boot right off there. But if I avoid that, and I make sure that the glue is only on the flush side, then all of a sudden, I'm not going to see that part push away. And so this is the same kind of like idea when you're doing the torso and things like that. Um, avoiding putting glue into the key itself and putting it around where the flat surfaces are, where the, where the joins are is going to help out a lot more and it's going to make sure that you get a, nice, a much tighter fit and you're not going to be fighting against that um, that physics. Don't fight against physics, you'll always lose. Okay, so with that said, I think I'm going to come in and again, I'm just going to do some quick clipping. Boop, boop. Uh, ch -ch -ch. And we're going to do the arms. So I'm just going to do a quick clean because I had a little bit of a so I have a little join right there, so I'm just going to clean that off. I'm gonna clean up the elbow where the other injection point was. So this time I'm just using the sharp of the blade and I'm just scraping. And the way that you want to scrape is it's just a, it's a twist up. So the way that I like to do it is you come down and you just gently scrape up. And so you should be able to do it against your finger and not hurt yourself you know, if you're doing it right. Because if I go in like that, I'm going to cut myself, right? But I'm just looking to scrape the surface. So I'm just taking off that, that dead dermis layer like that. It's the same thing here. I'm not looking to dig into the miniature. If I feel the, if I feel the knife bite, I've pushed way too hard. So, yeah, Ryland, the, the goal is to have at least two streams a week for a little while. Um, doing them from home, just kind of like... Uh, you know, increasing our ability to hang out with you guys, to, to chill, to talk about hobby stuff. Um, 
provide hopefully a little entertainment, a little hobby inspiration for everyone who's working at home and and continuing on with their stuff. Oh, I found a friend. I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen, but I had a little spider friend hang out with me. All right, so I'm going to get these arms in there. So for this one, it's a little bit of a push because they kind of clip together. So I just want to come in and I get a nice tight join there. Make sure everything's flush and looks great. So you can see, pushed everything in, it's nice and tight. And now we have a Dr. Octopus sands his octopus arms. That was easy, right? We're good, We're doing great. Okay, so at this point, um, you definitely want to go by the book. <clears throat> Um, and you're going to want to look at the, uh, the assembly instructions and make sure that you get all of these um, tentacles to match up. So each of them has a unique key. Um, so, you know, you can eyeball it. You can do it by just um, trial and error. But if you go to the, if you go to the website, um, go to the gallery, there are, uh, there are updated... Um, with numbers uh, assembly guides and that will make this process go way smoother way faster um, you won't have to play any guessing games um, but if you want the puzzle if you want the little little extra challenge I guess um, if you want to go if you want to go hard mode uh, no one's gonna stop you um, so I'm just gonna start clipping these things out Boop. all right so that was number three and it looks like we want, according to our directiones, number 19 for that one. All right, so let's get in there like this. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick scrape across the sides of these because these ones often have a little bit of stuff. Website assembly page, correction, thanks Josh. You're always there for me, even though you're not helping today. You've left me all to do it myself. I can never turn this stream off until my computer overheats and dies. All right. Hit this one up. I'm just gonna scrape. Uh, I'm hoping for those asking, like, um, as we get closer through the month of April, we should be able to kick back to a bit more of a showing off some new stuff and everything. We wanted to kind of take the moment, dive back into the things that we had done, have some fun with the hobby, do some different stuff, and then also we don't want to we don't want to run a foul of like spoiling things too often and having you wait too long. So that would just be disappointing for everyone involved. Whoop. Oh, I think I grabbed the wrong one. I didn't read my instructions properly. That's okay. We'll save that piece. See, I'm doing it hard mode because I have the chat up. I don't have the... Uh, I don't have the instructions, so this is why you should always follow the instructions. Here we go. I'm going to guess that it's this one. Yeah, this looks right. Let's do this. I personally think that this is kind of fun. Um, but I got all the time in the world, I guess. So... <laughs> Like, puzzling it together is pretty exciting. Uh, Josh can't stop me. I'll tell you what was a real fun puzzle. Was doing this. Oh, I'd have to zoom out. But this guy, so much fun to put together. Um, so we recently did a... We recently did a uh, final check for the, the bulk sample on him, which is basically the one that comes from the factory and provided everything works out great, is the one that you guys will see on the shelves. And so I got to put that together and that thing was fun. Oh my gosh. I felt so, I felt so smart as I like layered it on. Don't say I never do anything for you. I'm gonna get yelled about, I'm gonna get totally yelled at about that here in a second. I can already see Josh. He's calling me right now, trying to end it. Um, but yeah, so we got to do that. 
Dallas has done like four of them or something at this point. So it was like old hat to him. He was just like, yeah, it's really fun. And I was like, well, you're right. It is really fun. Tentacle number one. Uh, and I think just to keep things simple, do I want to glue these on right now or do I want to wait? Uh, Ooh, you go, where do you go? See, this is why I want to do this now because I just want to figure this out. <laughs> Let's see. So we have the key, instructions, Psh, who needs them? There we go. Yeah, look at that. I'm just going to glue that on now. <clears throat> I'm totally off book at this point. We're just having fun. I just want people to understand, like, again, so here we don't have a great connection point in terms of, like, where it goes flush, so I do need to put the glue inside the key. So I'm using the super thin um, plastic cement which helps with this, but effectively you just want to make sure that you have a nice thin layer of super glue or whatever. And uh, just plug it in, give it a little push. And tentacle one is there. Sweet. It doesn't have a hand yet, but we'll get to that. Okay, let's find out where this little guy... Where is your home, little guy? Where is your home? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is your home. Perfect. All right. So we're looking at number four, which is going to go to number 19 by process of elimination. Kind of doing this gorilla style here. Whoop, come here. All right. So let's line that up. Looks great. We got a nice flush surface. I'm going to clean these up really quick. I'm going to dive right in. All right, so. <laughs> yeah, Thanos is pretty cool. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. He's pretty friggin' neat. We'll get this Doc Ock ready and then... Doc Ock can fight him at some point. That'll work. I'm going to actually pull out... So I'm going to use my little file here really quick. I'm just going to file this line down because that one was not coming off with the knife as quickly as I want it to. Normally I'd sit there and scrape it forever, but I'm on a timeline here. There we go. Perfect. Let's get in there. All right, so again, slap that glue on. Come back in. Line it up. Oh, no. We went too hard and too quick. There we go. Hmm. All right, so sometimes you get a little too excited and your man hands break things, but that's okay because we're just going to glue this back on. So, come in. So every once in a while, these things happen. And I was filing, and what happened was I filed a little too deep, and so I weakened the point that the connection spot was. Um... This is not a huge deal because I simply glue the little connector point on and then once I had a flush surface I can just glue the um, rest of the tentacle back on too. So I got a little glue mess going on because I used a little bit too much glue which uh, I think you guys can see probably a little bit in the screen. Um, but once that's dry I'm just going to go back through and I'll just take my knife and I'll scrape a little bit down. That's how you solve too much glue. You can just um, smooth it back out and you'll never know this is a great technique for if you drop your dock ock on the solid concrete of your game store or whatever you can easily repair this um, hard plastic stuff with just a little bit of plastic glue or super glue and it takes care of itself so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and set up and I'm just gonna move on to the next one so we're going to clip there, clip right 
there. Great. And then we're going to get this piece. So, right here. And right there. Okay. How am I doing? I think we can get through this guy. I think we'll get there. Might not get to his hands, but that'll be okay. We can do the hands next time. Or it'd just be like magic oven. We'll do the baking show thing. Like last time, we did this. This is what it looks like when it's cooked. All right. So there's another one. Okay, I'm gonna skip this. I wanna go back to this red skull. Cause I do wanna finish this guy. And I wanna finish him with you. Okay, so there's our, there's our cube. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm actually kind of digging how that fluorescent worked out. It's very bright and poppy. Um, we're going to kick it up just a couple of notches, though. So, and then I'm going to have to say goodbye to you all for the moment. But we'll be back. Where's my ink tense violent? Cyan. Blue. <gasps> Do we not have a purple? I thought there was a purple. Oh, no. All right, that's okay. We can, we can make do. We can make do. We can solve this problem. All right, so I'm not seeing an ink tense violet, which is weird, but that's okay. Because we can make purple. So we're going to use blue, and we're going to use red, and we're going to make a purple. <clears throat> Maybe. There we go. All right. So, there's a red, there's a blue, and we want something that's, woo, I think we want something more on the red side of things. You just sit there and watch me mix. <laughs> do I prefer to do them at the home? Uh, so it's definitely it's definitely different. I don't know if I prefer them either way. I'm just happy that we get to do them. Um, it's a little weird doing them from from home because you're kind of by yourself and going with stuff, but uh, it's um. That's neat. I don't know about the one camera setup. I feel like while I'm doing this crazy, like mixing of things and everything, it's a little wild and difficult to like, difficult to do. Okay. So I think we've got a pretty good purple going on here. So I'm just going to glaze a little bit of this. glaze Ooh, hit that top make sure that it doesn't pool on us like that there we go and then the last thing to do once that would dry is just come back in and add a little bit of hot white spots which I'll probably make a mess but let's do it now just so we can close it out so we can sign our piece and make it happy make it happy all right so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to use this purity white gonna come in we're gonna add a little bit of like light streaky spots to 
really like amp up that glow. Normally I would wait until the ink had completely dried, but we'll just do a little bit of like two brush style blending here. Come in. Like this. Sometimes just playing around gets you really good results. For this side, that same kind of like pull. I'm not going to worry about the back because nobody's going to see it. I'm just going to come up to this front again. Just gonna do a nice little dot of that pure white. Give ourselves a little focal hot spot. Add those little like QB swirlies in there. And basically all I'm doing is I'm just kind of like randomly tapping the brush and dragging the colors along and stuff like that. Just trying to create a little bit of energy swirl effect, which is random and chaotic and the less Kind of like focused you are with it, the better off you are. Just want to keep it like that. Now I'm losing myself in the zone and not talking very much. This is like that really classic creative part where you gotta turn on the radio so you can find the street that you're looking for. All right, oh, <clears throat> get him in camera. Let's zoom in, How far can we go? So there we go, there's our red skull with his purple cube. I want to come back and dull this down just a little bit. We got a little carried away with our white, but that's okay. Because it's as easy as coming back through and a little bit of that. <clears throat> so there we are. That is a red skull completed outside of the base. So he's got his purple cube. He's, he's shining really well. <clears throat> um, 
All right, well, I'm gonna finish this doc and get them ready for my next stream with you guys. I believe on Thursday, the goal is to have Abraka Dallas joining you um, and doing a stream from his home. Uh, I don't remember what he's supposed to be doing, but he will be doing something. For those asking really quick, the colors that I used to paint the cube were uh, this psychedelic purple fluorescent from Scale 75. I used this Brilli White fluorescent from Scale 75, and then I just mixed a um, purple wash from Blue and Red Ink Intensity inks, because I swear there's a violet one, but it might be at the office or something. It's somewhere. I know I saw it before, but I can't find it now. So I had to mix one up. Um, so that was the cube. So one of the things I like about this fluorescent white is that it actually has some silver flake in it so it really helps with the the shine and kind of making that look really electric um, so thank you so much for joining us guys i really hope you had fun and that this first stream from home was uh quite enjoyable um you can see my laundry machines in the back so you know that i'm at home like clearly or i'm just hanging out at a laundromat who knows uh take care guys have a, a safe and fun week. Join us again on Thursday at 1 p.m. for another stream from home, this time featuring Abrick Dallas, Dallas Kemp, our uh, studio director, our sculpting director. Um, yeah, and uh, look forward to more content, all of that stuff. We'll be sharing a lot of stuff on social media. Please continue to share all of the cool stuff you're doing on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, you can hit all of our stuff on all the social medias. We're watching you guys. I'm um, really enjoying trying to make uh, more and more content for you to enjoy at home while we weather out this storm together. Um, but otherwise, always reach out. We're happy to hang out with you guys. We're looking forward to doing more of this. And I uh, hope you learned something. And we will see you on the next one, Thursday, 1 p.m., for home stream number one with Abraka Dallas. Thank you so much, guys. You have a wonderful time. Be safe and goodbye.